Hi everyone, this is the first preview of the LookDev Kit 2.0. This version is completely rewritten in Python and it is much faster and has better features than the first version. To begin with, I'm going to push the Refresh HDRs button as that's the action you will have to do only the first time after the installation. This process is going to create HDR preview images and also it's going to convert all your HDR files to TX. Now we have our previews for each of our HDRs and also we can have in this folder you can you can see that each HDR has its own TX file. The new feature of the LookDev Kit 2.0 is that you can use your own HDRs. You don't have to use mine. Um, this is a good thing that you can just put whatever you want and then just click refresh HDRs and everything will just update and you will have previews with your own HDRs here. If you want to delete all of the TX files or preview images you can just click delete TX JPEG button. Let's now load an asset. And load LookDev Kit. As you can see, we have the master control here. We can use it to scale it, but let's first frame our asset a bit better. Then we can scale down our LookDev Kit so our asset fits the framing better and let's launch a viewport, viewport renderer. As before you can change your HDRs also you can change the exposure on the sky dome you can rotate the sky dome Also, you can change the Skydom visibility in the render view if you want to see your asset by itself without a background. Also, new feature in the new LookDev kit is the turntable. So, you can change a couple of settings here. Let's just launch it. So, by default, your turntable length is 25 frames and as you can see it updates the entire timeline to 25 frames. The first half of the timeline is the object rotation and the second part is the HDR rotation. There is a rotation offset for the object if you want to find a better angle for your asset and also if you combine rotation offset of the sky dome and the rotation offset of the objects you can find better lighting or check your shaders or whatever. If you want to change the length of the third table just select your asset and then for example switch to 100 frames and everything will update completely. So now your timeline consists, consists of 100 frames It's a bit smoother than before, and also first half is object rotation and second half is skydome rotation. Next feature I, I've added is that you can turn off the shadow mat. Also, the fox plane is now selectable by turning on the depth of field button, and that automatically turns on depth of field on camera. With this, you can add depth of field if you use it and then 
focus better on your asset. Also, you can check how much camera sees in your viewport. Next thing is that I added some photographic controls for focal length, for aperture, and also for sensor size. Focal length, I added some preset focal lengths. So you can, for example, use some telephoto lens. Let's set the focus on our asset. Then you can change the aperture size in the f-stop numbers, which is convenient if you like to use cameras, real-world cameras. It's pretty the same. With this, what happens in the background is that my script recalculates the aperture size depending on the focal length and the aperture number. Also, I added the drop-down for the sensor size. These are the most common ones in the photography, so you can choose the crop factor of 1.5 for APS-C or 2 for micro four-thirds. Next thing I've added is the subdivision controls. It's just an easier way to add subdivisions to your object. Just click subdivision on and it will turn subdivisions and you can check, change the value using the slider. It will update, the, it will turn on the Cat Clark subdivision and update the iteration depending on the value on the slider. You can also turn it off by using sub the off button. Next part is bucket size. If you want to change the bucket size number, you can use this couple of presets. I usually keep it on 64, but if somebody uses this, this is the shortcut for it. The last thing is that you, you can load the checker shader. It's useful for checking out UVs and just a small utility that can help you out when doing UVs, textures, or anything else. The thing that I forgot to mention is also that we have Macbeth chart again. As you can see, we also have chrome and gray spheres. And also, like the last time, the top Macbeth chart receives the scene light and the bottom one doesn't. So you can use the bottom one as the reference Macbeth chart. And that's about it. The second version is also going to be free and I hope you're going to enjoy it. Please forgive me for the eventual bugs that are going to happen while using the look dev kit. Have one. Cheers.